The next step, of course, was the removal of a living stellar nerve. And this has now become a routine procedure at those marine laboratories where squid are studied. After the head and viscera have been removed, the mantle is cut down the middle and one half pinned out in a transparent dissecting dish. Very little magnification is required to see the nerve and to cut away the overlying tissue. A simple copper sulphate heat filter cools the light and the seawater bathing the mantle is chilled to about 4 degrees centigrade. Different scientists use slightly different procedures for the removal of a nerve. At Plymouth, Dr. Meaves first lifts the stellate ganglion and then progressively frees the nerve from the mantle. Apart from removing any superfluous tissue, no further preparation of the nerve is required before simple physiological experiments can be made. It has long been known that as an impulse travels along a nerve fiber, the active region becomes electrically negative to all the neighboring regions. Two electrodes connected to suitable amplifying and recording devices will therefore register a diphasic change as the impulse passes each electrode in turn. The change is only produced, though, if the stimulus is large enough because, like all single nerve fibers, the giant axon has an all-or-none response. This is the action potential, here continuously displayed because the frequency of stimulation is high. In 1938, Pumphrey and Young found that the conduction velocity of these axons increases with the square root of their diameter the giant axons being about five times faster than the small fibers. Moreover, they are graded in size. The largest, and hence the fastest, supply the most distant parts of the mantle. These giant axons thus play a vital role in the squid's life. They not only ensure that the escape response is as fast as possible, but also that all parts of the mantle contract simultaneously an essential requirement for efficient jet propulsion.